Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit today about ABA therapy and my experience with ABA therapy and um, a behavior analyst and uh, which is just really, uh, I think it's a misunderstood thing for me. Um, it's been really difficult to get help with autism for me. Um, I didn't get diagnosed until I was 22. So obviously by that time I'd aged out of any ABA program or anything that I could get due to insurance or Medicaid. Um, but so what happens for me is I talk to, I, I'm fascinated by behavior analysis, right? And I meet all these awesome BCBAs online and on Facebook and on LinkedIn and on other websites. And I meet all these awesome BCBAs and I try and talk to them because I'm fascinated by behavior analysis because I want to learn social skills because neurotypical girls have taught me one thing and neurotypical girls have taught me that guys with autism have no social value without social skills. So obviously you need ABA to learn social skills. Um, and, um, the problem is, is I've tried to solicit help from behavior analysts, BCBAs, who due to ethical reasons, um, are unable to engage in clinical treatment with me because I'm not, I'm not a buyer. I'm not a payer. Like I can't pay them. So I don't have the, uh, there's no contract in place, um, for payment. Um, and so I'm asking people for advice on Facebook and on um, social media and things like that. I'm asking BCBAs for advice on Facebook and on social media and things like that. And um, it's just like they, I get frustrated because they say that they can't help. They're not able to give clinical advice um, through the Internet or through because they're not in a contract with me. Um, they can't give me clinical advice and things like that. And that was really frustrating for me. And sometimes I get upset because and have a meltdown because I can't give me clinical advice because I don't have any funding source in place to pay them. Um, and so I sometimes have lashed out at some BCBAs or like threatened to file complaints with the ethics board at the BACB and things like that because I get frustrated that nobody can help me. Um, and so I, um, you know, I, I, I feel like, like I love, I love behavior analysis and I like behavior analysts, but I feel like a lot of BCBAs kind of got, we got off on like, we kind of like misunderstand each other and get off on the wrong foot because they think I'm attacking them. Um, but really I'm attacking the system that doesn't help me get ABA therapy. Um, and I just don't know how to do it properly. So it seems like I'm attacking the BCBAs for not helping me um, and things like that. And so I just really um, wanted to apologize to BCBAs everywhere. If I've ever said anything to you that was hurtful or harmful, or um, if I filed a complaint against the ethical board, um, which none of those complaints have actually been actually filed. Um, but like, I uh, wanted to apologize to BCBAs for I guess being aggressive in my advocacy to try and get help with autism. Um, I, I, I just, I know deep in my heart that ABA is for me and ABA is gonna help me get a girlfriend and gonna help me get social skills and help me get live my best life. Um, and I'm just trying to get 40 hours a week of ABA so hard um, so that I can do all these things with my life because right now my life has no purpose or meaning because I don't have ABA therapy in it. Um, and there's just no purpose or meaning to life without social skills and so, um, and girls have made that very clear. Neurotypical girls have made that very clear that there's no purpose to life without social skills. Um, and so I've been desperately fighting to get this applied behavior analysis for years and years and years and have gone unhelped. And and so I, I, I'm sitting at home in my parents' house doing nothing. Like I don't have a job, I don't have a career, I don't have friends, I don't have, you know, I don't have a girlfriend. And I just sit at home and do nothing but try and advocate for ABA therapy. Um, and people, insurance ignores me, Medicaid ignores me, um, and all these other things. And when I do try and reach out to BCBAs to talk to them, they can't help me because of the contract issue. There's no payment for source in place. Um, so they're not able to help me with autism due to that. Um, and so I have kind of gone, I, I mean, I've kind of like said some mean things to people because they couldn't help me that I didn't really mean, but I was just frustrated at the time. And so I'm just kind of trying to um, apologize for that and trying to join a conversation that behavior analysts are having on like the internet, like they're having it all over. They're trying to disseminate the science of ABA. And like, there's this big push right now for medical necessity. They're talking about medical necessity. And I'm really fascinated by that because like, when you think of medical necessity, like people often don't realize how important a skill is. Uh, if you don't live with autism, you don't know how important a social skill is, unless you're a BCBA. Um, and the problem is a lot of medical reviewers are not BCBAs, in my understanding. And so we have a problem here is that um, the medical reviewers 
don't understand the science of behavior analysis. Um, and that's a real problem in America. And um, I don't want someone, I don't know about parents with children with autism. I don't know about other people with autism. But, you know, I, 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 I don't want someone with autism to, I don't want someone who doesn't, isn't a BCBA making medical necessity decisions on my behalf when it comes to applied behavior analysis. That's just unethical and, and wrong on so many levels. And so the problem with medical necessity is like autism is a wide spectrum. So like you could always be going forward to the right on the math line segment, like the barrels that never end. Um, you can always move forward to the right and learn more social skills. So if I want to work 40 hours per week for the rest of my life on social skills, then I have a right to do so. Um, and Medicaid and Anthem or whoever these insurance companies are has no right to deny me services to learn to be as neurotypical as I can be. Um, and that that's very frustrating and very challenging. Um, and it's ended up actually what it does is it costs us, it costs them a lot of money on mental health care because they're not helping me with um, my autism. So they're creating comorbid mental health issues. Like I will tell you flat out the insurance companies, Medicaid has actually caused my mental illness. Like they autism did not cause my mental illness. Medicaid refusing to treat my autism caused my mental illness. Um, and so that's, they're spending more money on mental health care now than they are autism because of that reason. Um, and so just a lack of understanding and things like that. So, but like, I just wanted to apologize to behavior analysts for not, for being, um, for, um, for, um, for, um, for like, um, being aggressive and like asking for help and things like that. And, um, but yeah, I'm just, um, I really want to work in an ABA center and be, I want to be spend my days with BCBAs and talk to BCBAs because they understand social contingencies. They understand autism and they understand like social skills and how to teach social skills. And I'm fascinated by social skills and I want to learn social skills. So I want to spend my days, like I would love to volunteer or work in an ABA center so that I can learn social skills and just talk to people that I'm passionate, that are just as passionate about social behavior as I am. So I just wanted to share this video and I hope everyone has a great day.